Excuse me. Um, unfortunately, the time for debate has expired. However, uh, when this bill is brought back into the legislature, you will have time remaining uh, to finish your debate as well as for questions and responses. But it is now time for member statements, and I recognize a member from Toronto, St. Paul. Yesterday, the government announced their 2021 budget, and the Premier's finance minister said, quote, it's clear we are sparing no expense to defeat COVID-19. This is not the case. Conservatives are cutting supports during the pandemic. Nowhere in this budget mentions provincial paid sick days, and there is no new funding to make schools COVID safe. As I speak, classes in St. Paul's are in isolation, sent home, paying the price for a cheap government. Where is income for our individual theatre, visual, dance, musicians, and other creative workers who have lost work due to COVID? Local fashion designers who have had to stop production? Many comedians aren't laughing anymore. Toronto has the largest number of artists of any city in Ontario, and this government expects them to survive on hope. Hope does not pay the bills. What about injured workers? Our people in St. Paul's on ODS poverty and OW are suffering. Rates must increase. They weren't even mentioned yesterday in the speech. Aging adults are facing evictions, and this government's grants for small businesses, well, many in St. Paul's can't even qualify. A conservative budget that ignores the child care crisis, our demands for supportive housing, and provincial direct funding for survivors flowing now, not years from now, removes any chance of women's participation in paid labour. Speaker, St. Paul's has put this government on notice. Your time is up. Thank you. For their member statement, the member from Oakville, North Burlington. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Speaker. Today is a special day for people of Hellenic descent in Ontario and for Hellenes around the world. March 25th marks the bicentennial of the independence of Greece. On this day in 1821, the people of Greece rose up against the Ottoman Empire in a revolution that gained them their independence. After centuries of living under Ottoman despotism, Greece, the enlightened land that gave birth to democracy, reclaimed its liberty and was a free nation once again. I am proud that my bill to proclaim March as Hellenic Heritage Month was passed by our government, the first and only jurisdiction in Canada to do so. We are proud of our history and the gift of democracy our ancestors gave to the world. The bicentennial marks the restoration of liberty to the land where Pericles orated to the people of Athens, to the land where Alexander was tutored at the foot of Aristotle to the land where, where Hellenes stood for liberty at Marathon, Salamis, and Thermopylae, where they rose up in 1821 with the cry, Eleftheria y Thanatos, liberty or death, and the land that shouted Orchi, no, to the armies of the fascist invaders in 1941. While Greece is free, all nations can dream of freedom. Zito y Elada, Zito a Canadas, long live Greece, Long live Canada. Thank you very much. For the member statement, I recognize a member from University Rosedale. COVID-19 has thrown our education and childcare sector into crisis. There are COVID cases in nearly 20% of Ontario's schools, yet still no adequate mass testing. Women, and it's mostly women, are quitting or being fired from their jobs because they can't look after kids and work at the same time, stripping 30 years of gains to address workplace sexism. Childcare providers especially are in crisis, and they're closing down in record numbers. And teachers are getting sick on the job because this government is not doing enough to protect their health. And sadly, very sadly, kids are struggling with mental health. I want to acknowledge and recognize the parents who have reached out to me to share heartbreaking stories of their kids who are suffering and the loss of children and teenagers to suicide. And now we get yesterday's budget. Does yesterday's budget provide more support to parents, kids and teachers? No, it doesn't. There's cuts. There's no commitment to lower class sizes to help us tackle COVID. There's no commitment to continue funding to provide support for COVID. 
There is no real funding for affordable childcare. There's a lot of promises about increasing childcare spaces, but these promises are false because this government is doing nothing to help the childcare centres right now who are going under and going bankrupt. If this was our budget, we'd have more support for schools and childcare, more support for our kids, and more support for education workers and families. That is the right path forward. We're in member statements. I'm going to ask uh, members to quieten down so that uh, I can hear the member who has the floor. The member for Aurora, Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Thanks very much, Speaker. Speaker, last Friday I had the pleasure of gathering with members of the Persian community here in Ontario to host my annual Nowruz celebration, and of course, virtually this year. Speaker, Nowruz is an ancient celebration that dates back to 3,000 years ago, and although it's commonly known as Persian New Year, Nowruz is celebrated by millions of people in dozens of countries around the world, including China, Ukraine, Israel, Afghanistan, and many more. Speaker, Speaker, no matter where you're from. During Nowruz, you'll always find yourself in warm gatherings amongst family and friends. Now, I should note, Speaker, that Nowruz isn't celebrated as a day on its own. Like all grand festivities, there's a lead-up to Nowruz and a, and a winding down. I know what you're uh, thinking, Speaker. Uh, they sure know how to party, and you're absolutely correct, Speaker. The entire Nowruz season kicks off with Trashan Basuri the Wednesday before Nowruz, and it is celebrated by jumping over bonfires. Yes, Speaker, you heard me right, bonfires. <laughs> this fire jumping symbolizes the renewal of one's spirit and the purification of one's soul before the start of the new year. After Charshan Basuri, you spend the days leading up to Nowruz shopping for food, dessert, gifts, and most importantly, decorations for the housing table. Speaker, on Nowruz Eve, family and friends gather around the housing table which is an arrangement of seven different symbolic items, each uh, starting with the letter S and each with its own unique meaning. Sprouting grass, the symbol of rebirth and growth. Coins, representing wealth and prosperity. Hyacinth, flowers or, sim, uh, or sonbol, representing spring. Sumac, representing sunshine. Vinegar, the symbol of patience. Apple, the symbol of beauty. Garlic, the symbol of health and medicine. Now, Speaker, Nowruz means new day, and it serves as a reminder about the importance of harmony between life and nature, a symbol of renewal and a fresh start. And on this new day, let us embrace the spirit of new beginnings by joyously looking forward to this new year. I'd like to wish everyone celebrating Nowruz here in Ontario and around the world a happy, healthy, and prosperous new year. Nowruzitan Piruz, Haruzitan Nowruz. Member Statements, the member for Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Speaker. Since the pandemic began, Canadians of Asian heritage have experienced a dramatic increase in racist attacks, from verbal abuse to online harassment to physical assault. Just last week, a young Asian man had an egg thrown at him as he left work, not very far from Queen's Park. A young Asian woman was shouted at and called Corona as she crossed the street on Bloor. Another was harassed on the TTC and told to go back to where she came from. Speaker, this happened to people I know. They are our friends, our neighbours, our community members. Canadians of Asian heritage are facing these types of aggressions every day. It took the murder of eight people in Atlanta and the brutal violence against our elders for anti-Asian racism to get the attention it needs. But anti-Asian racism did not start with the pandemic. Canada has a long history of anti-Asian racism, from keeping the yellow man out, to Japanese internment camps, to the Komagata Maru incident, to the Chinese head tax. We cannot forget this racist history, and we cannot allow racism of any form against anyone. Speaker, we have been silent on anti-Asian racism for far too long. Silence is no longer an option. I call on all of us to speak up against anti-Asian racism. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Mississauga East Cooksville. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Late last week, our government announced a historic investment of 933 million in long-term care projects throughout Ontario. 
This funding is in, ad, uh, in addition to the 1.75 billion already earmarked towards the modernization of our long-term care sector. The funding supports the delivery of 30,000 much-needed long-term care spaces across the province over the next 10 years. With the addition of this new funding, Ontario now has approximately 20,000, just over 20,000 new, and just around 16,000 redevelopment spaces in the development pipeline. In my riding, uh, Mr. Speaker, Tyndale Seniors Village is being allocated 73 new spaces and 151 upgraded spaces. The project will result in a 224-bed home through the construction of a new building in Mississauga. I recently spoke with the team at Tyndale, and they are thrilled to be able to move into this next phase of providing care for people of Mississauga East Cooksville. Speaker, we know that the number of individuals and families in Mississauga who will require access to long-term care is expected to rise over the next decade. These 224 new or upgraded beds will make a significant difference in providing that access to those who need it so that our vulnerable seniors can get the care they need when they need it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Sudbury. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, in 2018, a Sudburyan said something to me that's been stuck in my head ever since. They said, we need to fix long-term care because the workers there are family while my family's not there. Think about that. Those workers are family while my family's not there. During COVID-19, the shortcomings of long-term care have been magnified, and there's a lot to fix, and I want us to start with PSWs, personal support workers. I had a conversation with Darla Fissette. She's a home care PSW speaker. She told me some PSWs make as little as $15 an hour. Darla cares for 10 to 12 clients a day. She used to take the bus, but because of COVID-19, the bus schedule has changed and it doesn't feel as safe, and so she walks to those clients. Tracy Rudiger used to be a home care PSW. She's now a long-term PSW. She loved home care, but had to get out of it because of the cost. She said she had to change her brakes every three months. She had monthly oil changes. She had higher insurance than everybody else and other yearly maintenance fees. I want to remind everybody that some PSWs make as little as $15 an hour. People often say there's a shortage of PSWs, but there's not. There's a, there's a shortage of people. There's no shortage of people who want to be PSWs or trained to, PSW, to be PSWs. There's a shortage of good paying jobs for PSWs, Speaker. And on Tuesday, I tabled Bill 266, the Support Workers Pay Act, to address this. Bill 266 is an opportunity to permanently raise that wage floor for personal support workers in any sector. And we'll also ensure that they aren't paying out of pocket for the travel expenses from going from client to climate. We have pandemic pay, Speaker, but pandemic pay ends. Pandemic pay only applies to some PSWs, and those workers are my family when my family's not there. Member Statements, the member for scarborough Guildwood. Thank you, Speaker. It's a pleasure to rise on behalf of my constituents in scarborough Guildwood. And I would like to uh, recognize an outstanding individual, Ms. Doris Skeen. Born in 1910, she turned 110 in December. Migrating to Canada from Jamaica in 1980, she has lived in Scarborough ever since. A force of nature who still lives independently, Dora is a true inspiration to all of us. It gave me great pleasure to be present for Ms. Dora's vaccination as she received the COVID-19 Pfizer BioNTech vaccine at her home on March the 16th by the Scarborough Health Network and the Scarborough Center for Healthy Communities. Ms. Dora is also an important example of how essential it is for all members of the community to receive the COVID vaccine. The fact that Dora is still able to live independently and spend time with her family at 110 years old is a real testament. Her safe and um, consistent, uh, uh, following consistent guidelines has kept her safe. Vaccine hesitancy is an issue that for too many is deeply rooted in a history of racism, and this needs to be addressed. It is also an issue that is rooted in the spread of misinformation. I want to underline the fact that all hesitancy related to COVID-19 um, is a public health concern and impacts our pandemic response. 
for the most vulnerable citizen speaker. So we should all take inspiration for Ms. Dora, who is in her 111th year, and uh, make sure that this trusted and safe vaccine is given to all when they are offered. There are numerous private conversations taking place in the House, and I'm going to ask members to quieten down so I can hear the member who has the floor. Next, we have the member for Mississauga, Erin Mills. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The health and safety is a concern of every Ontarian, and as well as our government, especially during pandemic. That's why our government approved the Trillium Health Partners expansion project in Credit Valley Hospital in 2019, as well as a newly approved construction of inpatient care tower in Trillium Queens Way site and complete rebuild of Mississauga Hospital in 2021 budget. As part of our government promised to add 30K long-term care spaces in Ontario, over the last two years, Mississauga alone got 192 beds in Shilligal Village, 220 beds in Trillium Health Partners, 320 beds in India's community, Yuhang Yung and Trillium uh, Health Partners, 128 to Evan Franca, 224 to Tidal Senior Village. A total of 1,084 needed long-term care beds just in Mississauga, approximately double what the previous government allocated for long-term beds for the whole Ontario in four years. Our government also values the importance of worship and faith, especially in these tough times. That's why it was my pleasure to support our government decision to update the framework to permit places of worship to operate at 15 per cent capacity and easing the restriction on outdoor dining and patios. This will allow residents, uh, residents of Peel region who have been in lockdown for several months to practice their faith safely and enjoy outdoor activities, giving this much-awaited, pleasant, warm weather. That being said, we are easing restrictions very cautiously. While we would all like to be open, we have to listen to the advice of our health professionals and simply cannot go against medical advice. Our government is determined to place Ontario in the path to recovery, and we will do whatever it, it is necessary. We are all in this together. Thank you. Thank you very much. The member for Brampton West. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Brampton is always ignored. Brampton remains underfunded. Brampton is never given a priority. Brampton doesn't get its fair share. Mr. Speaker, these were the perceptions that were per prevailing in the hearts and minds of people across Brampton until 2018. Those perceptions are now history. Yesterday was a historic day, Mr. Speaker, in the city of Brampton. In 2018, when this government was formed under the leadership of Premier Ford, we were working to improving the healthcare infrastructure in the city of Brampton, which was neglected for too long. And I'm honored to share the great news that Premier and this government announced a second hospital in the city of Brampton <laughs> to serve Bramptonians better. I'm also delighted to share that to support the long-term care needs of the Bramptonians, city, uh, province is working with Ryerson University and funding them Order. and working with them to build a new medical school <laughs> in the city of Brampton. And Mr. Speaker, there's so much more to Brampton Support Saga. Brampton also received two new long-term care centers. <laughs> Kuru Nanak Sikh Long-Term Care Center and Indus Community Long-Term Care Center, which will bring 352 Order. new beds to support, to address the long-term care needs in the city of Brampton. Mm -hmm. On behalf of my residents and constituents, I would like to thank Premier Ford, Minister of Health, and Minister of Finance for giving Brampton its due share, which was neglected for too long. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I, I've got to make an announcement first. I beg to inform the House that I've laid upon the table a request by the member for Peterborough Court, Mr. Smith, to the Honourable J. David Wake, the Integrity Commissioner, for an opinion pursuant to Section 30 of the Members' Integrity Act 1994 on whether the member for Waterloo, Ms. Fife, has contravened the Act or Ontario Parliamentary Convention. I beg to inform the House that I've laid upon the table a request by the member for Orléans, Mr. Blay, 
to the Honourable J. David Wake, Integrity Commissioner, for an opinion pursuant to Standing Order 30 of the Members' Integrity Act 1994 on whether the member for Willowdale, Mr. Cho, has contravened the Act or Parliamentary Convention. And I think the member for Oakville North Burlington has a point of order. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, as we all know, um, this month of March is Hellenic Heritage Month. And it also happens to be the bicentenary of Greece's independence after 200 years. So I'd like to ask all members of the House for unanimous consent so that we may all wear the Hellenic Heritage Month pin. We're seeking unanimous consent of the House to allow members to wear the Hellenic Heritage Month pin. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. The Leader of the Official Opposition has a point of order. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I seek unanimous consent to, um, for the House rather, to observe a moment of silence to pay tribute to the 154 Ontarians who have succumbed to COVID-19 uh, since Thursday, March 11. The Leader of the Opposition is seeking the unanimous consent of the House to observe a moment's silence to pay tribute to the 154 Ontarians who have succumbed to COVID-19 since March 11. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Members will please rise. Members may take their seats.